Merry Christmas everyone, thank you for watching this video. Before we get into the contents of this Hustler live stream video where, uh, you know, some big hands obviously are bound to happen, I had a quick announcement because end of the year, it's Christmas time and I am sitting on some metal, specifically some car protectors that I had left over from a few drops and I'm doing end of the year sale because I have a handful of these left, I have a supply of them and I kind of want to give them away and also I need some money to buy some more um, new shirts that aren't super wrinkled because I feel like every shirt I wear is wrinkled. So if you want to help fund that, I will buy some new shirts next year. Uh, go to my store, rampagepokerstore.com, buy one, get one free. Um, buy one of these, get one free. The store should automatically be integrated so if you just add two of these car protectors to your cart, then you can... Uh, you receive them for the price of one. So it's only available for just 24 hours, only today on Christmas Day. And I appreciate you guys for uh, the support. Appreciate you guys for grabbing one if you wanted to. I will be personally hand packaging everything together and maybe I'll add a special thank you note for all these packages as well since I'll be doing these and uh, packaging them myself. So have a handful of these ready to go. Click the link in the description below. It's only available for 24 hours and uh, let's get into the hands. RampagePokerStore.com, some extra luck box stuff only while supplying supplies last. Don't know how long these are going to last for, but let's get into the video. What's going on guys? It's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day because I certainly am. If you can't tell, the weather's really nice right now. I'm in uh, Los Angeles and I have boba in my hand, which is already like all you can ask for uh, in my life to be quite honest with you. But I'm currently standing outside of Hustler right now. You already know the drill. We're playing a, a high stakes cash game to uh, wrap up this year. Hopefully things go well. Last time I played here, I may or may not have hit like eight sets and did quite well. So I don't think I can replicate that, but definitely will be fireworks. It'll be a lot of fun today. Hopefully it'll be more fun by winning money. But um, yeah, hit that like button. More cash games coming in the future for sure. And high stakes one at that. But hope you're having happy holidays with your family. Let's get in there, play some cards, and I'm excited. We're back at Hustler with $50,000 to start in my stack, and we are starting things off hot early on in this stream with Pocket Queens in the cutoff. I raise it up to $350 with this premium and only get the Straddler to call, so we're off to a flop of 9 deuce deuce. Really disconnected and such a dry flop, the Straddler checks it over to me, and I'm just praying for my opponent to have anything here, some sort of backdoor draw or ace high. I start things off with a bet of $500. And this is when things get interesting because maybe my opponent did flop something because he check raises to 3,500. Wow, this is awesome. Music to my ears and once again, starting things off hot, facing a very large raise, 7X check raise. There aren't that many strong hands in here on this board and seems like he's mainly trying to rep that he has a deuce. Hoping it's a bluff, I make the call with the pot building. Turn is the six of spades. It seems like a brick, all things considered, and Ali G decides to think for a while and end up checking. Seems like he's giving up on some sort of bluff or potentially has a nine. It seems like I'm just way ahead right now, so often I check this one back. River comes the king of spades. It's definitely not an amazing card over my pair, but it seems pretty irrelevant given the action so far. And when my opponent bets $6,000, pretty big bets, definitely not going anywhere. If he somehow rivered top pair for a king, then so be it. I make the call and hear the good news that he has nothing. Show the pocket queens and right off the bat winning over a $20,000 pot. Got to love that. Let's keep the momentum going. I have pocket eights under the gun and raise it up to $350. This time I get the big blind and straddler to call. So multi-weight LaFlop comes 965 rainbow. Action checks to me on a relatively safe board and I think my hand wants to bet a lot, but considering it's multi-way, I decided to do something different and actually check this one back. Now to the turn we go, which is the Queen of Diamonds. Obviously not loving this card. And when the big line bets out $500, Straddler folds. I have third pair and a gutter to a straight. Once again, just happy to make the call. I'm not going to go anywhere just yet. The river comes, of course, the Bink 7. Sun running here at Hustler now sitting with a straight. My opponent actually decides to overbet to the pot to $3,000. Well... The only hand I lose to is 10-8, and that's pretty unlikely given I have two eights. So this is definitely a spot where I want to raise, but pretty unsure what kind of strong hands can even call a big bet. For those reasons, I decided to min-raise to 6,000, and my opponent snap-folds his king high. 
So nothing but smooth sailings so far. But the very next shuffle I'm in, I'm in the straddle with queen nine off suits. I get Nick to open it up to 300 from early position, and I'm happily going to defend against him. We're going to a flop of jack, nine, five, two clubs. Middle pair seems like a pretty good hand here, especially as someone who plays as many hands as Nick. I check it over to him, and he bets 500. Definitely not going anywhere. I make the call. Turn comes the deuce of spades. It's a complete brick here, and I check it over to Nick. And now Nick blasts out two thousand dollars definitely expecting him to do this sometimes i mean this strategy is very polarizing with a big bet or check here when a brick like a deuce comes i definitely expect nick to be very aggressive and also give him respect for a lot of bluffs so i'm not folding here ever to an opponent like him i make the call River now comes a queen, improving the two pair. I mean, board's pretty connected, and I check for a third time, expecting Nick to just continue blasting off if he had nothing. And this time, Nick sizes to $3,000. Definitely think I could raise here, but could I ever get called by much worse? Looking at the board, thinking maybe it's just jack nine and i actually lose to a good amount of other two pair holdings also lose to some straights lose to some sets so just make the call here be a little bit more conservative and i get shown the nuts huh <sighs> he found his way to river a straight and i'm just glad i got away cheaply on this river i guess very unfortunate hand no longer smooth sailings this next hand has the 200 dollars straddle on so definitely the game is getting bigger Henry starts off the action by raising it up to $700 from the small blind, and I have pocket deuces from the straddle, happy to go set mining, so I make the call and we're going heads up. The flop comes queen 5-5, five, five, two spades. Henry starts off with a small bet of $400, and with a very small bet here, definitely puts my hand in a weird spot. On one hand, my pair can be good a lot of the time, and I just don't want to give any two cards a good price to peel one. Secondly, my hand isn't so good enough where calling makes a lot of sense. So I decided to actually raise it up to 1500 here. If my opponent has a queen, I'll certainly hear from him. I mean, the goal is to essentially raise this right now and take it down, but Henry makes the call, so definitely not loving the situation. The turn comes a 10. Henry checks it over to me, and I have deuces. I'm just going to check this one back, as I don't think my hand is good anymore. We're off to River now, which comes another 10. Very interesting, because now I am double counterfeited. My deuces no longer plays. I'm basically playing the entire board. And when Henry checks again, uh, sitting with the board here, I clearly have the worst hand ever in this spot. Can I credibly rep a 10 sometimes as played? If I bluff here, I'm obviously trying to not get a queen to fold. Just trying to get some pocket pairs between a 10 and 5. So let's blast. $6,500 into the middle. And it doesn't take too long before calling. So this was a failed bluff, aka a punt. Henry has queen jack, finds a way to win this one, and I basically just give up all of my profits after this hand. So now sitting, break even in this game, let's battle back. Once again, there's a $200 straddle on, and I have ace queen of hearts in the hijack. Sammy under the gun opens it up to $500 for us to act, and with a very good hand playing pretty deep against this opponent, I'm going to three bet this one here and bump it up to 2000 one by one, everyone folds around the table until Sammy decides on a call. So in position, we're off to a flop we go of queen, seven, three, two hearts. Pretty great flop with the nut flush draw, but throughout the entire session so far, didn't seem like Sammy was playing super crazy. So I expect him to have a good hand here. When my opponent checks, I decided to check this one back. I either think I'm way ahead or just flipping. The turn comes the eight of diamonds. Sammy checks once again, and basically the same reasons as the flop, I expect to be ahead or flipping. I decided to check with reasonable amounts of showdown. River comes a bank four of hearts. Here we are with the nut flush. Very interestingly, Sammy decides to bet $2,000 into the pot. And even though it's a paired board, I think this is still a very easy spot to raise with the nut flush. Basically thinking I'll get value from his overpairs that could play like this. But if he were to re-raise me, 
then I wouldn't feel comfortable. But let's go with step A first. Just got to do it. I raised it up to $7,000 here, just going for pure value. And Sammy doesn't look happy, but he does look confused about this raise and talks to himself, tries to talk to me, and ultimately ends up paying it off. Crazy to think in hindsight now, looking at the footage, he had ace high. But I'm going to take it down with a flush and... Once again, back on the come up trail, winning a good chunk of change here in this hand. Now, after that hand, a few hours later, I just really wanted to showcase the highlight of my session here. Everyone around the table is sitting with about $50,000 roughly, besides two specific players, GT and Nick, both sitting on about $300,000, and they get into a massive one. GT raises with kings, Nick finds a way the sunrunner picks up aces and re-raises and this is just the madness beginning because gt with kings you can't really blame him here in this situation with kings he raises again this time to twenty four thousand dollars and this is already comedy because twenty four thousand is half of the stack of most people's at the table they have infinite behind and what's even more disgusting is that nick five bets again Puts in another raise to 75000 already putting everyone else at the table all in. Unfortunately for GT, uh, he is not all in and makes the call. So already watching a $150,000 pot take place. We go to a flop, which looks pretty innocent enough. Nick casually bets $40,000. GT casually makes the call. And I'm like losing my mind watching this many brown chips go into the middle. By far the biggest pot I'm able to witness in person, and it's only the beginning. On a turn that brings the flush in, Nick actually slows down and checks. GT decides to keep pumping money into the middle of his overpair, and now improved to a king high flush draw. He bets $65,000. And here it is. Nick onto him. Check jams for over $200,000. Just infinite infinite amounts of money here and just like that i'm witnessing a five hundred thousand dollar pot happening before my very eyes this all in though that gt's facing makes him go into the tank and somehow he actually makes an incredible correct fold absolute cooler for half a million dollars literally the value of my house and all happening here through this very silly card game but nice hand to nick unfortunate for gt to get cooled here even more so unfortunate to just run such a big hand against the other big stack. For one of the last interesting hands of the night, the $200 straddle is on, and it's my turn to play some cards again nearing the end of this stream. I raise it up to $600 with the 6-7 of hearts. Superman on my left makes the call and action fold around to GT, who 3 bets to $2,500. GT is the one who just lost a 500k pot. I really haven't seen him lose any composure though. He doesn't seem tilted. Seems like he's still playing really well. So I have a very fun hand to play in position. I'm happy to make the call and see a flop. Suited Superman comes along as well. So mainly here, three ways to a flop. I'm putting GT on a very strong hand. The flop comes Jack, 6-5, two hearts. Flopping middle pair and a flush draw, as good of a board as, as I can ask for. GT decides to start off with a bet of 3500 Of course, here, there's nothing I'm doing besides just making the call. So much equity, and suited Superman ends up folding. He folds sevens, which is actually the best hand so far, somehow. We're going to a turn now, which comes the Jack of Diamonds. And when GT decides to slow down... I think this is a very interesting card and dynamic at this point of the hand. Definitely could continue to start bluffing, or I can check this one back with as much equity as I have. Trying to think about what hands GT could be 3-bidding with, and I think it's weighted more towards pocket pairs and less Jack X. And if that's the case, then I think bluffing would be a good spot here. And if there's any chance I think my 6 is ahead, then I would check. So I'm betting because I don't think my hand is good and I'm just turning a high equity situation like this into a bluffing one. I decided to blast out $11,000 sizing up here, just trying to put pressure on GT's pocket pairs or ace highs. And when GT decides on a call, all right, you know, would expect him to have some over pairs, would expect him to have pairs from eights through tens. Let's try to make those hands fold in the river. Or I can always hit a flush. We're off to a river, which comes the king of spades. That is not it. 
GT checks again, and I don't love it, but I'm going to be bluffing. Sticking to the script on the turn, praying GT can fold. I blast out $35,000, and GT snap folds. Obviously, you can see on the screen I had the best hand all along. Maybe this was a tad unnecessary of a bluff, but regardless, I got the job done. I'll win the pot, and it's really good for morale, and clearly also my wallet to win a $36,000 pot. All right, we'll call that one a wrap. Another very successful live stream cash game. If you've been following along, watching the past few videos, I've been getting absolutely wrecked in all the other games I've been playing, cash game wise. And um, it's nice that today went smoothly for the most part. Uh, had a bluff that didn't work out, had the six, seven hand that maybe I didn't need a bluff. Who knows? Overall, very much a, a smooth ride and things went well, which is great because I lost a lot and I kind of made up for a decent chunk of that in just this one silly session. So variance is always high. Nice that uh, things just worked out for me. I bought into the game for $100,000 and I was just not to the biggest stack, even close. Like th there was like a $500,000 pot that happened, which is insane. I had a comfortable, smooth ride. I cashed out for 133600 so everything is good here. Yeah, so nothing like, no ridiculous pots, but just uh, some smooth poker, which is definitely not something I'll complain about. So thanks so much for watching. Thanks for all the support. It means a lot. And uh, looking forward to ending off this year with the big bang. See you guys next time. Peace.